had a power failure the other day where our power was knocked out when a Canada goose tried to use the power lines as a landing strip. And his goose was cooked pretty good. Well, with the big bang, the lights were out for about three hours, and when they got the power working, I started finding several things that weren't working. Things such as the security camera, well, I was able to fix that by just power cycling it, but my digital photo frame has not fared as well, and it's not working. So let's see what went wrong with it. Check it out. So this is a picture frame. Yes, it's big. This is uh, one, probably one of the bigger digital picture frames that was uh, made. I think it's a 19-inch screen. I've had it for quite a few years now, it's got full remote control and it'll do video and and everything and um, I use it to display my photos on I do a lot of photography and rather than print pictures most of the stuff I do is like landscapes and sceneries and stuff but rather than print all of these pictures off I just display them on here because that way I can enjoy my photos and not have to waste a bunch of paper and ink and or send them out to have them processed anyway we had a power failure the other day when a goose got cooked on the power lines and knocked out my power and this is a casualty it won't turn on and it's been dead ever since so let's find out what went wrong with this thing we'll start out with the power supply and see whether it's just the power supply that's been cooked Yeah, that doesn't look normal, does it? Let's take a look at that on the scope. See what's going on there, right? Let's we'll slow that down. You can see this power supply is pulsating on and off. So, the problem is most certainly the power supply. Now I could just go and replace the power supply. These things are a dime a dozen. It's just a standard IT information technology type uh, power supply. It's a high current power supply though. This one's 2000 milliamps. A lot of these ones that you'll find are one amp output, one and a half amp. So this is a big one. So to replace this, I'd have to I don't think I've got one that's that high a current. I'd have to find one, but that would not be any fun. I think it would be more fun if we crack this one open and just see what went wrong with it and see if I can get this one to function. So let's do that. Let's open this one up and see what went wrong with it. The easiest way to get into these units that are welded shut is to just use something like a pair of side cutters and just get into the edge here and just give it a bit of a, a squeeze and a twist and you can usually pop these things open quite easily I said usually right I got the front end open so with the front end open I can I can certainly get the rest of it open oh plastic's kind of cracking there we'll try this side you can usually just pry these open okay now that I've got it open a bit. I can just stick a screwdriver down into the side here and just wedge the rest of it open just like that. And voila we have bulged capacitors. Oh I was thinking that something blew up in here but that's just uh, shellac. It's not uh, nothing to be concerned about but I do see there's a bulged cap right there so definitely that one's going to be bad and probably this one's going to be bad as well and uh, that's probably all that's wrong with this unit is those two caps now this specific type of adapter doesn't have any connecting wires that connect to the actual plug they're soldered right down so I'm going to have to heat up the solder here so I can remove the board so that I can get into this thing and we'll swap out this cap minimum, probably this one as well. And hopefully that's all that's wrong with it. And uh, that will make this unit work again like new. That's the plan anyway. More than likely what happened on this is it was not damaged by a power surge. More than likely the reason that this one failed 
was that it had been running for several years, just plugged in, and the capacitor itself had already dried up and had failed. But because it was at operating temperature, everything was fine. And then when the power went out, the power was out for about three hours, it cooled down. And once it cooled down, the characteristics of it changed enough that uh, it is now there's too much ripple and the ripple is being detected as an overvoltage. And what's happening is because there's so much, there's so much ripple on there that's not being smoothed out by the capacitors that the ripple is causing the LED inside the optocoupler to shine bright, which of course cuts the voltage back. And then as the voltage drops, it goes dimmer and then it kicks the voltage up again. So the, the fact that it's doing this on the scope it's going up and down, up and down on the scope. That's telling me that the regulator itself is actually responding. It's just responding to an incorrect error voltage just due to high ripple. So changing the capacitors here should get this power supply back up and running for that type of symptom. So here's the cap that we, we know is for sure bad. It's the main filter. This one is the, looks like the primary filter. Our diode is here, coming right off the transformer. So the transformer pins are these two here. One goes directly to the capacitor, the other one goes through the diode and then ends up on the capacitor, on this side of the capacitor right there. So this is the primary filter and this other one here looks like it's the secondary. It's the secondary filter. So we'll change out this primary filter cap, the 470. And the one I've got is a little taller so I don't know if it's going to fit in the cabinet or not, but we'll see. Now we know this one's bad. Let's see how bad it is on the ESR meter. So ESR tester showing 3.3 ohms. Again, it's a 470 at 16 volts. So it should be no worse, like absolute worst case, 0 0.18. So it's a little bit low. Let's try a new one and see what a new one, or a little bit high, I should say. A new one is 0 0.11, again, a new cap should be less than 0.18 so the old one was definitely shot we can test this other one at the same time it's probably also heading north but I don't have one of that size but let's just see what it what it reads in circuit we'll read it in circuit 0.2 actually you know what it's probably not bad because it's a it's a 680, so I mean it's going to be in that roughly that same range. It's starting to, it's starting to, but I think we're probably okay with just changing the one on this. This is just to get this thing functional. I mean, after all, it's a it's a cheap power supply. You can buy these things dirt cheap. This was more about can we make this thing work, and the answer to that is yes. This should get this one running. Just gonna get some solder wick, clear off that uh, little bit of solder here. We'll put the new cap in and uh, get this thing back in service. Those electric cars are pretty quiet when they uh, they pull out, aren't they? Hopefully that's going to fit. 
I get the stinking suspicion that it won't, so I'm just going to bend it over on its side just to give it some clearance because I don't know whether it's going to fit in the cabinet. This thing has the back of this thing's is lower than the front. So let me just see if it'll fit in here. No, you see, it's going to stick out. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to put that cap in in such a way that it's this that I can lay it down on the board. Otherwise, I'm never going to get this thing back together. So we'll just kind of set it in like that, and that way it should uh, should be able to get the cover back on. Okay, that should be okay, I think. We'll put this back on to the base. And now we can test this for voltage before I put it together. Okay, I've got it hooked up. Let's plug it in. Try not to electrocute myself in the process. This cover is still open. 12.2 volts. I think uh, we'll be okay. Let's just try the picture frame and see if it works. But first, let's put the, uh, the old unit back together. I'm just going to uh, I'll glue this at some point, but I just want to plug this in now. So I don't need that on anymore. Okay, power. Ah, good. It's working. Luritech, let's get digital. These are some of my pictures. Probably aren't going to come across proper on camera because I'm not at the right angle. For viewing being an LCD screen, it's not if I were to tip that more directly in line with the camera. You can see some of the photos that I've taken. This is the Grand Canyon. Kill the lights in here. This was uh, done, I think, in 2014 when I was down at the Grand Canyon in Arizona. So these are some of my my scenery shots that I've got, and I just leave my pictures displaying on this photo frame. I think it's kind of nice. I just have it sitting in the corner on, a, on an end table. I just leave this thing just displaying some of the pictures that I've taken. Winthrop, uh, Washington. It's made to look like an old, an old ghost town. And you're still not getting quite the right angle because of the way LCDs work. The camera's still a little bit above it, but you're getting a, a, a pretty good representation of how they look. But this picture frame was actually quite expensive. You can see how big it is compared to my hand, right? Oh, a shot of lightning. It's um, it's nice. It's got a couple of scuffs in it because uh, my cat knocked it down once and it fell on its face, but it didn't it didn't break. But it did get a bit of a a little bit of a scuff here and there on it. But um, over the years, I'd say I've had this picture frame for for quite a few years, and uh, it's pretty much left running around the clock so
that picture was taken it's a waterfall that's on the uh, going to the sky highway in Montana and there's a little pull out the side of the road and just a waterfall over the rocks and this will also display video I could put videos on here and have them playing as well just as easily this is not an SD card but it'll accept an SD card uh, you can download to internal memory and it'll also take a USB stick but it's not a bad picture it's an HD panel a lot of these uh, picture frames were not high definition like a lot of the smaller ones were uh, you know 640 by 480 was the resolution of a lot of them and a lot of the cheap ones out there are relatively low resolution this one here is uh, 1920 by I think it's 1920 by 1080 so it is an HD picture and it, it looks good you know there's certainly nothing wrong with the picture on this and I'm pretty happy that all that was wrong with it after all these years of use was one capacitor in the power supply so that's uh, even though the average person is never going to fix a power supply like this when a power supply burns out you're just going to go buy a new one I just figured it was worthwhile to go through it and see what exactly went wrong with it just for a, a troubleshooting side of things so anyway that's how to fix a power supply even though we've probably done that before and showing off my old 19 inch digital photo frame in addition to playing photos of course with the remote control I can also play movies so I think I've got some video on this thing we'll see it has music and everything so it should play through here this is uh, when I went to Alberta ice fields and the glacier park I did a time-lapse movie this was all done with still photos not with a video camera but with a natural still camera Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.